Hi, Roxanne Paget here. I'm a mixed media artist, bookmaker, creative director of a museum, and a self-proclaimed stencil junkie. I love stencils. Um, I make them, I buy them, I find them. I think just think stencils are a wonderful tool to use in your mixed media work. Um, I especially love stencil girl stencils. They have some wonderful stencils and you could probably find any design you want um, and something that I like to do is just think about how I use each stencil so today we're going to be talking about how to play with one stencil now I know that's going to be hard because we all have piles of stencils um, so I have these from Stencil Girl and I decided that I was going to focus on this one stencil today. Love this design. Um, first, though, I want to talk about the substrate and the paints. So first, paints. I mostly use acrylics. I use any and every brand um, from expensive to inexpensive. I don't tend to use heavy body acrylics when I'm working with stencils more of the more fluid ones. And of course the golden fluids are great. Um, you also, if you didn't know this, watercolors, you can work with watercolors with stencils. You won't get the crisp edges maybe, but it gives it a different um, look, vibe, if you will. And then of course, uh, we could talk about paper. I mean, really any paper. Like I have black binder paper. This is um, scrapbooking paper. This is paper I pre-painted with acrylic paint. You know, craft paper, stock paper, paper ephemera, binder paper, white paper. You know you all have a lot of paper out there. So really anything, a magazine page, a text page. So I'm just going to start here with just a little basic sheet of paper. And I'm going to talk about my stencil tools, what I might use. So, of course, traditional stencil brush. I've kind of moved away from using these. I tend to use the sponge roller and these little sponge ones. Um, and, of course, you can use a cosmetic sponge. And jelly plates are great for stencils. So that's something you could use. Now for this particular stencil, I was thinking that because there's so much negative space in between, I wouldn't want to use like a smaller tool to fill this in. I would want to use something bigger. So I might use this, but I think in this case, the sponge roller is probably my best bet, right? And so I just get some acrylic on a paper plate. Red I'm going to use for a palette. Sometimes I use wax paper as a palette, which you will you will see. And I'm not going to go over all the different simple ways that there are to stencils. Because I think a lot of you probably already do a lot of stenciling already. So I just get a good coating on the roller. But I'm not... I don't want drippy wet paint, right? Now I could... I could go real light handed here, right? Or I'm getting different variations on the blue. Or I could really get in there and give it a solid covering. Just depends. Yep. There we go. So super simple, super easy. Okay. If I had a smaller stencil, like this, I might use the smaller sponge on there. But we're talking about this stencil for today. I'm going to just try to see how many variations I can get with one stencil. So I have this pile here, and these are all done with the same stencil. So this is on fabric. Yeah, you can stencil on fabric. This is on just some tan craft paper. These two are on some scrapbooking paper that I didn't particularly like, but I like it a lot better now that I stenciled on it. 
Um, this is, I think I made a print with the stencil, which I can show you. This is one of my also things I like to do is to paint a piece of paper and this I just did a scrape and then I stencil on top of that. So kind of like with two colors. This one I did the back because probably at some point this might become a book cover. This is just like the first one I did, just one color on white. This is with watercolor. Get a really different look with watercolor. More fabric. Wax paper. I love to paint on wax paper with acrylic paint. Yes, the paint will stay on the wax paper. And then these right here are done with the jelly plate. And this one was just a piece I did. I don't know if this will work, but if you want to try to clean your stencils, I do it on a piece of paper like this. I actually don't clean my stencils a lot unless I want to use it right away. Okay. So that's just from cleaning. All right. So one of my other super fun ways I love to use a stencil is to make a crayon rubbing of it. Okay, so I put the stencil underneath. Here's a piece of paper. Again, it could be any paper. And I use this, a regular black Crayola crayon. If I can find the fatties, I buy the big ones and you just rub it sideways. Look at that, so much fun, All right? So that's a totally different way to use your stencil. Love it, love it. I think this stencil in particular works really well um, for this. And I'll show you some other versions I have. And of course, because it's crayon, let's see, what do I want, what do I want? Let's do some red and orange with my watercolors. This is crayon and watercolor. You can do a resist. So you can do all kinds of fun things with the crayon ribbings with your stencils. And you could also then take this and put this on your jelly plate. You can just keep adding layers and layers and layers. Another fun thing to do is because we all love our tape, right? Okay, so here is a piece of wax paper. And I found this white, it's like masking tape, but it's really white, right? I'll put that on wax paper. And we're going to put our stencil on this. I think for this one, we're going to use the smaller brush. And I think I want to variegate a little bit too. Oops. Too much. I'll have to use it for something else. Putting a little bit of that underneath first. Okay. Again, I don't want it soaking wet with paint. Okay, I'm going to do my first piece of tape. And kind of an up and down motion because then you won't, it won't get underneath. And as I go, the paint also gets lighter because there's less paint on your tool, right? I still have a lot of paint in here loaded up, so I could, I could totally use that. So now I have some really cool pieces of tape that I can peel off because it's on wax paper. I'm not going to do it now. I'm just showing you now that I can use for my book making, whatever it is I want to use my tape on. That's cool tape. Okay. So what I'm saying is you can take one stencil, one, and just do all kinds of fun things with it. One thing that I like to do is kind of track, um, keep track of what I'm doing, kind of documenting. Like, I cannot remember 
all the ideas that I have. So I kind of documented my journal. So here we go, kind of go back. Here's one color on white, two colors. This is on fabric. This one's on text page. Here's a couple of those that are on the scrapbooking paper. This is the watercolor one. These are created with um, the jelly plate. Here's the crayon rubbings. This is the black crayon rubbing with watercolor. Here's a gold crayon with some watercolor. So, I mean, you can just use a lot of these techniques with one stencil. I think it's really fun to try to see what you can do. And then you can just create all these different pages, papers that you can then use for your mixed media work. Make books, do collages. However, there's that watercolor one again. So have fun. I think it's a good idea to experiment with a stencil before you do anything else. Um, oh yeah, here I'm working on the next page. Here's the wax paper. Look what a nice piece of collage that makes. And this is some of the tape. Here's some with the big punches. And these were just pu a punch that I punched out of these. So again, this tape is great. Here's some I did earlier. So have fun, experiment with your stencils. And if you have, are so inclined, document it in your journal. Thank you. Follow me on Instagram at Rocks Paget and see what other things that I'm up to. Thank you.